So, uh, Roger, Roger Hardman here, is, um, has submitted his award for our MSc award uh, uh, competition, and we're very pleased to present him with £1,000 for the best MSc award. So, there you go, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Roger. Um, that's brilliant stuff. And we want to see more MSc students uh, submitting their awards. We will actually be announcing an, another award uh, just after conference. So keep your ears and eyes tuned. Um, and then, should we go next door? Well, and you first, can tell could, us I, could I just say okay. thank you, uh, mainly because um, actually reading my dissertation, I think, was a challenge in itself. But all those uh, sleepless nights are worth it, and I'd love to uh, tell you all something more about it. So please do come and join me next door. Thank hey. you very much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. The question in my project is all about, really, what happens in organisations when people start to go green, and what happens to the employees, and what happens to the organisation, and how do they react or relate together during the process? Where do they start from, particularly, is important. An employee's green outlook in the, in the company and the organisation's green strategy may be the same or it may be completely different. Now, does this actually matter and what difference does it make? That was the research question. There have been many years of studies on individual green behaviour at work and the barriers to uh, going green. But I particularly wanted to fill a gap in the literature which was about the um, way in which a whole organisational look at this has not really been done very much at all. So looking at the, the way the individual relates to the organisation and the organisation to the individual in going green. So the title of the project was this, it's rather wordy and technical, Green Fit, the Influence of Pro-Environmental Strategy on Person Organisation Fit and its Outcomes in the Workplace. I'll try and explain what's happened the method of the study was to do a large survey, large scale survey. For me, it was large scale. It involved nearly 500 people, and the, the study was um, a study of fit, really, about green attitudes between workers and their organisation and what they thought about their organisation's green strategy. The type of fit that was used there are many different types of person organisation fit was needs and supplies fit. In other words, how much does the organisation supply the needs of the green employee and how much uh, the opposite way around as well. Um, we also needed to look at this from two particular angles. Um, the supply angle was looked at, at the, by asking people about their perceived level of green activity in their organisation. So how green did they rate their organisation where they worked, and then ask them about their desired level of green activity at work, and actually get them to rate how strongly they wanted uh, green activity. And then we would have some way of matching needs and supply, and try and see what the differences were between them. The sample consisted of a majority of public sector workers, many of them in the Ministry of Defence. The age was up in the... Uh, typical age was in the 40s and 50s. Um, many of them uh, were very well educated to degree level and beyond. Uh, many of them were acting as managers and there was an almost equal balance uh, between males and females in the study, but two-thirds were in uh, public service organisations. So it's a good working population in the actual uh, sample. An online survey method was used within the Ministry of Defence and then cascaded out to people um, who would then be asked to pass it on to other people. Uh, it was actually run on 100% green energy servers by the uh, internet company and it proved robust. I used a programme called Lime Survey to actually programme the survey online and that proved a, a very flexible method of actually asking people and receiving their feedback. The survey measured different types of things to look at their green fit at work. First, there was the perceived and desired uh, levels of green strategy, and these were going to be compared to outcomes, and I chose four outcomes to look at. Job satisfaction, organisational commitment, work meaningfulness, which isn't looked at very much, but it's 
definitely there is something people can relate to. And also tenure, the length of time people had served in their organisation. I also measured people's green values using the new environmental paradigm by a guy called Dunlap and uh, their confidence in their own knowledge of climate change as well, because I think that's particularly important um, to actually ask people what they think about their climate change beliefs. I found, moving into the findings now, that the main predictors of desired and perceived green activity at work on this self-report basis were these that um, about one-third of the whole variance in desired organisational green strategy was made up of these three elements here as the main leaders. Not a huge effect, but first of all, green values predicted how strongly people desired green activity at work, and then how much they believed their organisation should dictate its green policy. That was also a good predictor. And also, confidence in knowledge of climate change was a good predictor as well. But again, a small effect there. I could only account with the things I'd measured for about one third of the actual variance in um, levels of desired organisational green strategy. Looking at the other side of the fit, that's uh, how people desired their company to be or their organisation. This is how they perceived it to be. The first predictor was mainly how much the company predicted, uh, sorry, dictated green policy. So in other words, how clear the company was about what their green strategy was going to be. And secondly, the sector that people responded from was also important. And if you look at a CPID survey that's recently come out this month about people at work and their values, you'll see that the third sector, the charitable or not-for-profit sector, seems to score head and shoulders in values responsiveness uh, between private and public sector. And uh, that was uh, possibly uh, why the sector was important there. However, this data was not a perfect set of data, and the results uh, on the desired green activity were fairly heavily skewed towards the very uh, positive attitude end of the scale. Um, so much so that it was, it's quite difficult to rely on the findings uh, with huge amount of confidence. That said, there was a very good uh, broad spread of here perceived um, green activity going on in organisations. So very high activity here, very low activity there, and a good broad normal distribution uh, in the middle there. And also here you can see how much higher uh, people's desired levels for green activity were. So I actually discovered that there's something, thank you, um, very positive about people wanting to have green activity at work. Now, I don't know the reason why that is, because I didn't measure the reason why. I just know that they want to work for a green employer or have their employer be as green as possible. The green index, um, I won't go into too much into this, but basically the elements I measured were eight different things and they factored down into two different concepts I can talk about here. One was a green action concept, saving energy, recycling waste, so sort of direct action. The other was green culture here, um, issues that you can see there that, that organisations can adopt in order to start to um, encourage green activity. Two things that didn't load into any factors were travel reduction. That was quite unpopular in my survey compared with these other factors. And also um, dictating green policy was also not very popular. It didn't seem to load in with the other factors, so I eliminated those from the results um, in this particular study. Fit and outcomes, um, I won't speak very much about it, but basically I needed to use three-dimensional graphs to plot the results of um, people's needs for green activity, their perceived green activity in their organisation, and then the third element, their outcome. So you ended, I ended up with three-dimensional graphs like this, which are not direct plots of scores, but it's actually getting uh, two regression coefficients of um, perceived needs and desired needs for green activity, and then plotting it vertically against a work outcome. So when you look at this, um, you have to interpret these graphs a little bit carefully. This is the base of the graph, the square at the base, and basically you've got perceived going along the right-hand side there and increasing, so this is um, 
people who perceive their companies are very green here. And here, this is desired green activity. This is people who really do desire a lot of green activity. And down here, people who don't want very much of either. So if someone scores very highly and they, um, with their company and their results are the same, they'll fall along this line here in the centre where people fit very well. So the scores are equal. The, the amount of desire for green activity is the same as the perceived green activity in the organisation. They fit very well and they um, appear on this line here. The horizontal line, which is from side to side of the square graph I showed here, the horizontal line is where there's divergence between levels of fit. So just trying to explain this, it's a crucial thing here. Employee overfit, that's where employees, this zone here, this square here, employees have very high desire for green activity, but they're working in a company where, or an organisation where, they perceive very low green activity, and over here the opposite way around. Um, the two concepts here that are important just to share, high performing fit is where both the company and the individual perform fit um, at a very high level of green activity. Here they fit, but there's a very low level of green activity. So you get a very three-dimensional look at this relationship. So going back to this, job satisfaction skewed slightly towards the desired end. But if you go from front, low-performing fit to the back, high-performing fit, there's a slope up. It's not significant, statistically, but very much there. People in high-performing fit situations seem to get a lot more job satisfaction. And just working through... Organisational commitment showed, in fact, the opposite. The slope went from back to front. Again, down at the sides means that where there's discrepancy between levels of fit, people's organisational commitment tends to drop off. But the trend there was opposite. People in low-performing fit organisations seem to have higher organisational commitment slightly. Um, again, those results were not signi significant statistically, but the trends were there. Work meaningful... Thus, again, here very heavily skewed towards the desired strategy here. So um, people with huge desire for green activity did find their work meaningful. So again, I don't know the reason why that is. It's not a qualitative study, but quantitatively there are some interesting results there to look at. And then final outcome, uh, tenure, the length of time people serve. Now here I did actually find a statistically significant item and um, generally people who uh, fit well in a high performing fit situation tend to also link in with longer service in their organisations, they tend to stay longer. And the conclusions are there. Exploratory generalised study, treat results with caution. But I hope it's got people talking. This could be another reason to go green. That actually there are really direct benefits, there's a feel good factor, a social desirability factor to go green, it can actually improve um, issues within the workforce. Could organisations improve the green strategy by exploring green fit? And could it improve engagement outcomes? Could be a whole new reason we're looking at here for going green in companies. Not just about saving money. It's about quality of work, and enjoyment of work. So there you go. Thank you very much.